Hi, I'm Laren. This is Knife Steel Nerds. The past several years, it has become very common for knife makers to straighten their warped knives with a carbide ball hammer. Is this leading to cracks and bad performance later on? Is this going to lead to broken blades? I will let you know because I did the study. So using a carbide hammer on a piece of hardened steel is a type of peening. Peening is a general term for working the surface of a material, usually by cold work. So I do have an older article about cold work, such as with cold rolling or cold forging. And then I have a somewhat newer article and video about cold rolling 50 to 100. So what cold work does is strengthen or harden a metal or material. So if you cold work an entire piece, such as through cold rolling, you get an increase in hardness as you get more cold work, such as here for 50 to 100 where we tested it either in the as-received annealed condition from the manufacturer or normalized and given a fast anneal, so it was a bit harder to begin with. And then both of them, after 20% cold work, they're increased in hardness up to about 25 Rockwell. And then at 40% cold work, it's up to almost 30 Rockwell. So you're cold working the material, it is strengthening it. Now, if you cold work too much, eventually you will get cracks, just like if you continue forging a piece of steel when it has gotten too cold. So peening is a form of cold work that is only applied to the surface. The most common and best known form of peening is shot peening, where steel shot is sprayed against the metal to cold work the surface. This is sometimes done to give a matte finish, but it's generally performed to enhance performance of certain parts. The cold work applied to the surface creates a residual compressive stress. Now, when knife makers hear residual stresses, they sometimes worry, but these compressive stresses are not a bad thing. Residual stresses are those stresses that remain when the original force is removed. The stress remains, which is why it's called residual. So shot peening creates a compressive residual stress as opposed to a tensile stress. When the surface is in compression, that creates an environment where crack growth is suppressed. So you can think of a compressive stress as pushing cracks back together rather than pulling cracks open. So shot peening is performed on parts that fail to high cycle fatigue or cyclic loading. These are parts like crankshafts, gears, or other parts that see millions of cycles and then fail to slow crack growth. Shot peened parts last through many more cycles than those that are not peened. Though knives do not generally fail due to high cycle fatigue, so this wouldn't necessarily lead to improvements in knife performance, but we would not expect it to negatively affect performance either. However, there can be dangers to peening. Just like you can overly cold work steel, if you over peen the surface, that can lead to surface cracks, such as shown in these micrographs of a 1045 steel that was over peened. Straightening pieces by peening has been around for over 100 years. So here's an illustration that I found from a book from 1910. So peening is like the opposite of normal forging. So instead of hammering it straight, you are stretching the surface on one side, which then returns the piece flat. So here in this curved area, you lengthen that surface so that it returns straight. So hammer peening has been pretty common with knife makers over the past decade or two. I had not really heard of many knife makers doing it before then, but it's becoming more and more common, usually either with a carbide ball hammer or with a chisel. So the chisel and Carbide ball lead to somewhat different behavior when you're stretching the material. The chisel leads to more vertical stretching while the ball leads to even stretching around each impact. The chisel is preferential in some ways because generally for straightening you only want material moving in the direction of the curve you are trying to straighten. However, the stress from a chisel can be more dangerous because of how concentrated it is, potentially leading to overpeening. Kyle Daly recommends using a carbide ball hammer, which he makes and sells, and he uses a method where he makes vertical lines in of the carbide ball impacts to create the directionality instead. And he has a YouTube video where he shows how to do this. I recommend watching that if you want to learn how to peen. And of course, you can look at his hammers if you're interested in learning the technique. Well, I've gotten a lot of questions from knife makers the past few years asking if straightening by peening is leading to micro cracks that are embrittling the steel. As I described before, peening does not mean that cracks are forming. It is a cold work process. And as long as the steel is not overly cold work, there are no negative effects on properties. So I wanted to test this, so I used a carbide ball straightening hammer on some toughness coupons of heat treated MagnaCut. For one condition, I hit the pieces in many places before grinding and finishing, so the peened surface was removed. There were no more peen marks on there. 
On the other coupon, I ground and finished the coupons first, and then I hit it a bunch of times with the straightening hammer. So, And then I compared that against pieces that did not get any peening at all. So I measured that with impact toughness. Impact toughness measures the energy required for breaking the steel. So if there were any pre-existing cracks, we would expect to see a reduction in the measured impact toughness. Because the impact toughness is controlled by two stages. One is crack formation and one is crack growth. If there's already a crack, then the energy required for crack formation is zero. And all you have to do is grow the crack. And so impact toughness is greatly reduced in that condition. Now I do want to call out two things that made this study possible. One is my Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash knife steel nerds. You know, I had to pay for the carbide hammers that I used for the tests and then of course the consumables to make the coupons and then go test them so that I could compare with and without the carbide hammer marks. And also another thing I should note is that my new book, Knife Engineering Second Edition, it had this study in it. So those that bought the book before this video came out, they already saw this information. And there are several more studies in the book that have never been showed on my YouTube channel before. So go buy the book if you want to see some more exclusive content. Now looking at the different conditions that I tested, they were all about the same. The one that was straightened with the carbide hammer after finishing did have slightly higher toughness. I'm not sure if that is due to a true improvement from the peening or if it is just statistical variability from testing. Because remember when I test this, it's not like I get 15, 15, 15. I will get like 15 and a half, 16 and a half, then 15 and a quarter, and then we average it, right? And so in this case, we got three values that were a bit higher than the others. So it might be that the surface peening did help a little bit, but the improvement was small either way. So I wouldn't count on especially hammer peening for improving the surface. You know, maybe if you're doing shop peening, you can come up with an optimized condition that might improve things a little bit. But regardless, I did not see any detriments from my test with the carbide straightening peening hammer. So my test did not show any negative effects from hammer peening, but there are still dangers if you do it. So a knife maker previously sent me a knife that had a crack in the handle. When we removed the handle scales, we found that there were cracks that had initiated within the peening dimples. So it's a bit hard to tell in the pictures, but these were relatively deep peening marks. It looks like this steel was over peened. And so there were cracks formed in the surface of the steel and grew from there. Now, they were probably already there and the knife maker just didn't notice them. I have heard some people worried that they might have micro cracks inside the steel that they're just not aware of. The cracks are going to form on the surface. And so especially if you remove the peening marks, like with grinding or something, then, you know, there's no cracks there. You would see them. But if you are removing the peen surface, then that residual stress is no longer there and you might have trouble with the steel warping again or bending again because you remove the compressive residual stress that was keeping it straight. So to summarize, peening is a surface cold working process to create a residual compressive stress in the surface. That compressive residual stress can be beneficial in parts that fail to high cycle fatigue, though knives do not usually fail in that way. They fail either in a single impact or a small number of high energy impacts, which would be called low cycle fatigue. And low cycle fatigue behaves in a different way to high cycle fatigue and therefore does not really benefit from a compressive residual stress. Peening is an effective way to straighten thin curved pieces of metal such as warp steel knives. That is very useful because knives are very hard and they are very easy to break if you're trying to straighten them again. So peening has become very popular for that purpose. Peening does not negatively affect steel when done properly. However, cracks can be formed if steel is over peened. So you have to be careful and make sure that you're doing the minimum amount of peening to get your part straight and not over peening or making very large peen marks that might be overly cold working the steel and introducing cracks. So anyway, this was interesting for me to look at. I hope everyone can uh, have nice flat blades without over peening and breaking them. So until next time, bye bye.